We are joined today with Captain Aisha Mohammad Al Hamili, Assistant Director General, Air Accident Investigation Sector. Ms. Hamili made history at the age of 16 by becoming the first female pilot in the UAE in year 1998. Captain Aisha Al Hamili was appointed as ADG AAIS in April 2021 the sole authority of air accident investigations in the UAE. Since then, she has introduced many strategies to position AAIS within the top organization globally. Al Hamali made history at 16 by becoming the first female pilot in the UAE in 1998. The achievement set the stage for her future success in the aviation industry. Al Hamali broke the record of being the youngest permanent representative in ICAO Council throughout the organization's history. Her tenure at the ICAO spanned over a decade. She led several panels, committees, task forces, and working groups to establish new ICAO strategies and improve the existing ones. Her first post at the GCAA as Air Accidents and Regulation Senior Officer. In 2019, she was awarded the Honorary Doctorate Degree from Agan University, Greece for her contributions to the World Air Transport, Air and Space, Law Postgraduate Certificate from McGill, Canada and a Master's in Air Transport Management from City University, London. Welcome on board, Captain Aisha. Thank you, Poonam. It's a pleasure having this uh, conversation with Aviation Guide. Uh, and it is a great pleasure to represent uh, the General Civil Aviation Authority, which is the sole authority to uh, regulate and oversee the aviation activities in the United Arab Emirates. As you rightly stated, I manage the air accident investigation uh, sector in the UAE. Uh, our main goal is to maintain the safest and secure and sustainable aviation system. Uh, and we work hand in hand uh, with our partners and stakeholders in the UAE and internationally. Captain Aisha, it's wonderful having you over here today. You know, we see very few female leaders who are leading a role what you are leading. So coming back to that, when we talk about air accident investigation, if you look at it, it's a very complex task. Could you tell us about the General Civil Aviation Authority and the expertise the team has in aviation regulation, different types of aircraft, what are the standard operation procedures, engineering, material science, and definitely, you know, the human behavioral aspect which you are an expert in? This is an important uh, question. To go back to the root, everything we do in aviation, our core and our goal and objective is maintaining uh, safe operations. Uh, in accident investigation in particular, it is a mandate from the International Civil Aviation Organization to have accident investigation system in every state. In the UAE, of course, we always uh, uh, aspire to be number one and to be uh, among the leading organizations, either by standards or implementation of standards or having and acquiring the highest level of uh, human resources which can uh, implement uh, these standards. Annex 13 or accident investigation, which is one of the most important activities in aviation, the main objective is to know why an accident happened and to prevent it from happening in the future. As you know, accidents in aviation are very expensive. But, Absolutely, I agree with you. But to prevent them, my team, which uh, I have, I would say, uh, a very highly qualified team that we uh, headhunt them and uh, acquire them from the industry. So I have pilots, we have engineers, and we have experts, uh, experienced people, and human factors. Their main job is to investigate, gather data, uh, not only focusing on human factors, but also focusing on every aspect of an incident or an accident from uh, organizational aspects, from procedural aspects, from training aspects, before the flight uh, yeah. happened until the accident or incident happens. So their work, uh, safety recommendations, to prevent those accidents from happening. And these recommendations, they go to either the manufacturers, which we managed to change many standards in the manufacturers. Uh, we managed to change some standards internationally. Mm -hmm. 
and also change some uh, procedures or training methods here in the UAE down to the regulators because we also look at regulations and how they are implemented and how uh, they have been followed here in the UAE. That's, that's interesting. But it is also being said most of the time what we see in the air accidents, human error is basically a symptom of the system. And as you have rightly said that you are putting right kind of systems in place, you are replacing systems which are not aligning with the today's demand. What kind of systems, uh, specifically when we are talking about human error, have you put in place to minimize the human error? Uh, if we talk about the old school, more than 80% of accidents or incidents happen because of human factors regardless of it was in the cockpit or if it was in the organization because behind every system there is a human who feeds that system completely and there is a human who operates that yes. system for us here we focus on the issue rather than the people and why the person have uh, done it or have followed a certain or have conducted certain activity uh, and we see the problem behind the system for example if the problem that occurred is because of uh, a lack of training. Then we look at the organization. Is there a training in place? And if there is a training in place, what is the background of this, tra this training? Is it an internationally uh, satisfactory standard? Or is it something that they have deviated from? Or is it not implemented simply? So we dig, we go behind the human and we go behind all these systems that's, that's to know really the root cause. That's really interesting, yeah. Because sometimes for us, in the cockpit, you will have, for example, a tail strike. Yeah. Simple, air, air strike. But then you will see that there are procedures that are not implemented. There are training that have not been uh, followed. And then there is a problem procedurally in communicating between the crew in the cockpit. So we need to know the root cause of these so that they don't happen in the future. Okay. We don't look only at the, at the problem, but the root, at the root cause, cause of the, of the issue, what is there? And we yeah. have surprises most of the time, and this is where the recommendation comes in place to prevent, hopefully, accidents from happening. That's, that's really interesting. Can you also give us an overview of the air accident investigation sector? How many professionals uh, are training or retraining in this sector globally? Mm -hmm. And then we will come back to the UAE part of it. Let me give you a glimpse of yes. accident investigation. You know, in, in the aviation world, everything is standardized. For example, it's easy to be to follow uh, on the pilot's journey. There is PPL, CPL, uh, instrument rating until the pilot, you know, gets uh, in the cockpit and releases. Yes. In the regulatory world and investigation world, it's a bit different. It's built over the experience. But we have developed here in the UAE a new system that is very similar to the pilot system, which is called the competency-based training, which means that I can acquire a pilot from the industry with minimum experience, and I put that person in training, and that training will be built on competency-based. There are competencies that, the, that the, the investigator needs to have, yeah. uh, you know, and, and I would say the most important one is curious mind. Yes. and the ability to look beyond the surface. And then we put them in a training that is competency-based, which means that there are certain things that this person needs to know. Either they are trained here in-house, yeah. or either they are trained within the industry here in the UAE because they will investigate the industry, yes. or they are sent to one of the uh, most pronounced um, uh, names in the aviation industry, like universities such as Cranfield or Embry-Riddle, uh, to have uh, that uh, training. Uh, so there are steps for the investigators to start with junior investigator to end up with a senior investigator until they end up being able to investigate complex uh, accidents and complex uh, uh, Do you incidents. find a challenge uh, for the, I would say, a talented workforce when you look at the air uh, accident investigation? Yes, absolutely. Uh, accident investigation is very unique. Uh, because at the beginning, at the interview, you will not know if that person has the resilience. Because from my experience here in the accident investigation, uh, there is a, a post-traumatic syndrome disorder that happens, but people do not detect it. Yeah. And there are people that actually cannot continue. 
because you're dealing with a person that deals with the trauma of the site, and at the same time, you expect them to investigate that accident. Absolutely, And at yeah. the same time, sometimes dealing with uh, the families of the crew or families of the victims, which sometimes adds so much pressure on the investigator. So these, uh, I would say, competencies, I only see them with time because at the beginning, even the person, sometimes they don't know if this job is for them or not. But we try to do our best to uh, see, does that person have the elasticity and the, I would say, flexibility to adapt to all these pressures? Because, because there can pressure. be emotional, psychological, a lot of pressures exactly. as you are highlighting. Exactly. Yeah, and which can come with the experience or which can come when you are actually dealing with the exactly. situation. Exactly. Because even myself, like sometimes you go to an accident site and uh, the work is done, it's cleaned, we only have to deal with the machines. But sometimes you see like burnt, uh, I would say, you know, um, uh, remains yeah. or you see, um, uh, I would say it's uh, even looking at the body of the aircraft that is crumbled, it does leave an impression on you as a person. I agree. And also, uh, and I noticed that especially listening to the black boxes, the cockpit voice recorder, and I have noticed my team, some of them, when they, because when they listen to the cockpit voice recorder, they have to analyze each uh, voice in the cockpit from uh, the reason or, 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 or causes of death before or after the knobs and isolate these knobs. And the more you listen to the cockpit voice recorders, the more actually uh, it is recorded in your subconscious. In your subconscious mind, yeah. And sometimes... And it leaves a very strong impression exactly. about, yeah. And some, some of my colleagues here, like when we talk as a team, uh, uh, we realize it takes a month at least for us to get over that voice and, and yeah. carry on our yes. lives. You know, UAE is a major international aviation hub. So what kind of challenges do you face with regard to air-related incidents? And as you know, there are many different airlines transit through the UAE. The UAE is number one in terms of ICAO uh, audit which means we are number one in safety worldwide. Wow, and congratulations is, for that. <laughs> and this, we have been number one until uh, you know, the next audit. And this tells you a lot. We not only implement IKEA standards, but we go beyond IKEA standards. And it's not because uh, we only maintain the safety, but this is the way we do our business here in the yeah. UAE. Maintaining these standards is applicable not only on our uh, operators, but also uh, on uh, the foreign operators. And these standards are implemented across domains in the UAE, from security, from safety, from air transport, taking into account our leadership uh, visions and aspiration of being number one, being the biggest, and always keeping in mind uh, the contribution of aviation. So uh, the major challenges, of course, uh, we will always have some challenges that I would say uh, associated with safety, which our regulators con continuously working with either our stakeholders or with the international community to mitigate these uh, challenges, yeah. and also working internally here in the UAE to always make sure that we have the best infrastructure, uh, appropriate infrastructure that can cater for this growth and always maintains the highest standards of safety. That's really interesting. You know, what we are also seeing is one of the challenges today uh, most of the airports and airlines are facing is the transportation of dangerous goods. So how are you handling the transportation of dangerous goods? So for every aspect in aviation, as I said, there are standards. Yeah. Like dangerous goods is major part of our security sector, which are handling uh, dangerous goods. One thing that is very unique to aviation, that is, I think, different than any other industry, is everything is standardized from the way you package, the way you transport goods, from uh, the weight of the goods, from the material that you transport of the goods. If I take you back uh, in time, if you remember the lithium battery yeah. with the heat runaway, the way the industry dealt with it, it comes from first international standard to put standards in the way they pack it, uh, the way they store it, and the way they transport it. And of course, the UAE was major part of that standard and that activity back then when it came on the table. So I would say when it comes to dangerous goods, we always uh, implement the highest standards in the aviation industry. Coming back to something which is very, very personal, what has been one of the most challenging air accident investigation for you personally? I would say keeping my team motivated because with accident investigations, 
you deal with both emotions and between pressure and getting the job done. Yeah. So the challenge is how can I balance between taking care of the team as human beings that are dealing with trauma while delivering on time because we have standards that we are accountable for and between informing the public and keeping our, the international community informed of, about our investigation. So I would say the major challenge that I face is keeping that balance and keeping that team uh, motivated. That's, that's really, I think, one of the key, key aspects of the air accident is like human. And I think what you're doing is an amazing, amazing work. Uh, just one message for the industry which you would like to, you know, pass it on. Do not compromise safety, no matter how the business goes. Safety is the most, it's at the core of our business. If you are safe, then the other aspects come by default. So invest in your safety, invest in your human uh, resources, uh, while of course keeping your business, uh, we're taking your business into account. Thank you so much for talking to Air Cargo Update and Aviation Guide. Thank you, Pona, I really appreciate Thank it.